Hello fun people, I'm Isaac Carlson and today I want to understand the story of Shan Yu. We are going to examine the rise and fall of this ruthless warlord. And of course, if you're new here and you'd like to join this powerful army of Disney fans, then consider subscribing. In 1998's Mulan, the Huns are the ultimate warriors and Shan Yu is the epitome of that mindset training and violence. In the art of Mulan, Shan Yu was described as being conditioned since he was little for this life as a warlord. His expertise in combat, superhuman strength, unstoppable endurance, and relentless will were stoked throughout his life to prepare him for the moment where he would make his move against his enemies, where he would get to ride on horseback with his iconic curving sword to slaughter anyone who stood in his way. And as he rose to become a leader of the Hun army, he further solidified himself as a man who was more than human by tattooing his eyes, sharpening his teeth, and growing claws. Shan Yu's entire existence was dedicated to war. He's not directly based on some specific leader or threat to the ancient Chinese kingdoms. He was created to be someone who was the culmination of what an evil invader would appear to look like and what they'd believe. That's why when the Emperor of China constructs his Great Wall, Shan Yu feels driven to invade, believing that the country was testing the Hun's strength, resolve, and might. He wanted the opportunity to have China's greatest troops fall by the will of his men. Shan Yu had a superiority complex, which drove him and his armies to take on any force that could stand against them. Perfect. They didn't just want to be powerful. They desired to show the world how unstoppable they truly were. And Shan Yu was extremely confident in their dominance. With the apex predator Hayabusa the Falcon on his arm, the ability to confide in an elite group of Hun soldiers, and hundreds of well-trained war-hungry men behind him, Shan Yu felt he had come prepared to bring China to its knees. He was an uncomplicated warden of impending doom, and that was his purpose in Mulan's story. The supervising animator of Shan Yu, pre-Romanellos, explained that the more real the threat was to China, the more powerful and heroic Mulan's actions became. Therefore, Shan Yu was created not to analyze the complexities of villains in war, or to understand the mindset of invaders, or to be entertaining, Shan Yu was built up as the leader of China's downfall. Every aspect of him was established to serve as a reminder that there was death approaching. When his falcon would fly over enemies' heads, he served as a messenger of evil and doom preceding Shan Yu's arrival. Hayabusa was the shadow casting evil before you would see the evil itself. And everywhere that bird went, destruction was left in his path. Soldiers were killed, messengers were taken down, villages were massacred, and to Shan Yu, it was all a trial to prove himself in the game of war. By building his wall, he challenged my strength. <laughs> Well, I'm here to play his game. That's why he jokes about killing his enemies in cold blood and is even willing to take down his own men. In a deleted scene that depicted the aftermath of the Hun army ravaging a village, when one warrior attempts to save a bird from being destroyed, Shan Yu targeted the young man to show his army that no weakness would be tolerated amongst their ranks. All creatures should be given a chance to live free, but freedom has its price, and the weak will pay. <laughs> While this scene would have revealed that not all of the Huns in the army were cold-blooded murderers, the moment also showed that Shan Yu didn't just want to show through his invasion that the Huns cannot be defeated, but he also was working to expose how weak China truly was. To him, intimidating enemies, tracking armies, and plotting his next move was all necessary to do what truly drove him. He was willing to do anything to purge weakness from the world. That's why he doesn't want to avoid any threat that came his way. On his path to the emperor, he could have avoided the imperial army in the Tungshao Pass, but he was unwilling to allow the Huns to be seen as anything but as efficient, quick, and deadly. Shan Yu was always prepared to go to battle, which led to the deaths of another village, the main troops of China, and General Li when the Huns arrived in the mountains. But those troops were not the last line of defense for China. Captain Li Shang led a small group of troops to the Tungshao Pass and quickly revealed themselves, leading to the Hun archers on the peaks to rain fire down upon them. Using their cannons, though, the meager force was able to stop the archers, but that action only got the attention of Shan Yu. 
In a matter of moments, the entire Hun army approached the remaining Chinese soldiers on horseback. In one of the most breathtaking scenes in Disney history, in my opinion, the massive wave of Huns descended upon the few warriors left to guard the Imperial City. With the booming theme of Shan Yu playing, which is one of my favorite villain themes, the Chinese soldiers knew that if they had to face this entire force, that they would be massacred and they were prepared to die in honor. But this fate was avoided by a single soldier. One Chinese soldier took the remaining cannon that was instructed to be used to kill Shan Yu to the center of the battlefield and used it to not kill one man, but to defeat the army itself using their position on top of the mountain against them. By firing the cannon at the peak of the snow covered mountain, a massive avalanche was initiated that tore through the Hun army and led to a seeing Shan Yu scared for the first time. The high ground could not help them. In anger, Shan Yu cut through the soldier who defied him and tried to escape the onslaught of snow, but eventually he was forced to succumb to its power with the rest of the Huns. Long after the snow had settled, Shan Yu eventually did rise again out of the destruction, only to realize that his grand army had been obliterated. With anger, frustration, and sadness filling up his soul, he let out a horrible scream which called the few remaining soldiers that survived beneath the ice to come by his side. Without saying a single word to one another, Shan Yu led the remaining Huns to the Imperial City and used the belief that they had been defeated against their enemies. While Shan Yu successfully infiltrated the palace by ascending to the rooftops, his soldiers entered the parade that was meant to celebrate the heroes who had defeated their army, which put them in a perfect position to capture the Emperor when the time was right. After Hayabusa retrieved Shan Yu's sword for him, the elite Huns grabbed the Emperor and locked themselves within the palace. Even though China would not fall like Shan Yu had planned, he still believed he could rise above the kingdom if he was able to show the country how their emperor would submit to his violence and threats. Your walls and armies have fallen, and now it's your turn. Bow to me. But of course, the emperor would not kneel before his enemy. And before Shan Yu could strike down that man, Chinese warriors brought the emperor to safety, leaving Shan Yu in the heart of enemy territory without any way to achieve the victory he had fought for. In a rage, Shan Yu initially targeted Shang as the man who had taken everything from him, but Mulan showed the warlord the truth. She was the one who had destroyed the Hun army. The soldier from the mountains. Immediately after learning the truth, Shan Yu abandoned Shang to pursue Mulan. He didn't question her claim or wonder how she had accomplished what she had because she was a woman. He recognized the face of the warrior who had undone his efforts to vanquish China and went after her with all of his rage fueling him. Shan Yu tore through massive wooden posts, exploded through the ceiling, and attempted to strike down Mulan, summoning all of his strength and passion to kill her. Everything he had prepared for throughout his life was coming together in this moment, facing down the only person left who he had the ability to defeat. But Mulan was able to outsmart the Hun leader. In a matter of moments, Shan Yu had his weapon stolen from him, became pinned down to the roof, and was pulled into the air by a rocket, sending him into a tower of fireworks, causing his death. While there was a treatment of Mulan 2, created by one of the original film's directors, Barry Cook, that would show Shan Yu and his army returning as ghosts, who would haunt and torment northern China, the reality was that we never saw that insane confrontation take place. Shan Yu had spent his entire life searching for his opportunity to go to war, obliterate his foes, and rise above those he deemed weak. But when his armies arrived, he was not prepared for a hero who would bravely end his reign of fear, destruction, and death. But let me know down below what your thoughts and theories are surrounding Shan Yu. Also, make sure to subscribe and click the beautiful bell, and then click on another magical video in the description or on the screen. Finally, thank you to my patrons, thanks for watching, and have a magical day.